<laughs> I've just drilled out the wrong hole. All right, good morning, uh, friends. Okay, so today we're going to put a remote coax switch in for transmit. So I had this at the house for many years. It's Array Solutions Rat Pack. That's the controller, and I want to ask you in a minute something about controllers because we need a software controller. So we need to throw this away, and I need buttons on the screen. So one, when I'm live streaming, you can see what antenna and I'm on. And two, when I'm on remote control on my desktop, I can click from the vertical to a dipole or whatever, or a long wire or something. I don't know. That's the bit that goes in the field. So this is, um, you've got one in and six out. I believe there's a seven core cable we need to wire up. I can't remember. I think it's seven. It's probably seven because there's six relays in here. And this is going to go all the way out through the cabinet. I've already got the cables into the field. So we put this one in the field. And to start with, we'll have this thing. It needs 12 volts. I've got some 12 volts here. I think we'll replace that with some decent wire. That's some old stuff I had knocking around years ago. We'll have to disassemble it and everything. So let's just go out to the field and have a recce and see what we need to do. So in the antenna field, this is our box. Uh, so let me explain what's going on in here. So these, the ones that, the ones that come up here, they're the ones that go all the way down into that tube, and they go all the way over to the office. It's a 41 meter, about 130 feet, into the office. So we've got some pretty heavy coax here. So pretty low loss stuff. And then the stuff at the bottom is what's going out into the field. I don't know why I've got three connected right now. Yes, <laughs> I can't remember what I was doing. Oh yes, both of these, that's right. So these are receive loops, these two here, and they go off to the office. That's my main transmit antenna at the moment. Now I've only got one ad transmit antenna, so this has got to be, we've got to put our little controller onto here. And uh, lucky for us, I've already put in a pair of seven or eight core cables. I mean, do we put the box on the outside somewhere? Do I just temporarily leave it in here? Because the idea being is we'll have the main DX Commander transmit antenna up here somewhere, which could be an R&D one, because sometimes I, I haven't, you know, it's up and down like a, well, you know, things that go up and down. I've got these chocky-blocky things, whatever they're called, electrical connectors, you know. So we need a pair of these. Let's disassemble this and find out what the hell we've got inside. I can't remember what this looks like. There it is. Done it. Right. Okay, well, it all looks in one piece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Brilliant. Why have I put a yellow bit on that one? Oh, because it was the ground. All right. Well, let's snip all this off and uh, graft on another piece. Now, this looks a little bit heavier than it's supposed to be designed for here. So what do we do? Put a different grommet in. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about this, this control panel here. So what I really wanted was, um, and because of my ADHD, I find it really difficult to concentrate on some websites, particularly if it's more than bullet points. Uh, it's just the way I am, and I apologise about that. What I'm looking for, I don't want to control the world. I just want a six-way remote switch with the software. You know, the boots and sheet machine up. I fire up N1MM. I select antenna one and that's my transmit or two or three or four or five or six because that's what we got here. We've got six way switch. So I want to re replace this with a little USB come RS232 thing and a tiny little box. What I've seen at the moment on the market is something that will control 84 radios, 16 rotators, your EME system, switching multiple amplifiers, 
I don't want that. What's the point of me paying for all that? Whoa, it's gonna be a tiny little box, maybe with a manual override. I don't care. Manual override would be nice. <laughs> and uh, a tiny little piece of software that just has my transmit. If you know someone that, or a device, or you can build me something, I'm not building it. I haven't got the time or inclination, actually. It's not my thing. You know, with Raspberry Pis and all that, I want a plug and play, typical appliance operator special. Maybe you can help me out, point me in the right direction. I like these, they're rubbery. We just gotta measure how big that is, if I can find my little measuring tool. He says 20 and a half, so 20, we'll call it 20. And then I've got a hole punch, uh, which makes rather nice little holes in rubber grommets. And then, yeah, we'll do that, I think. So, a bit of scrap wood. There we go. So that should stretch out, but I've got a bit of spare with me. Oh my goodness. I <laughs> think it'll need to be bigger than this. Thinking about it. Uh, hmm. That's five mil hole. And this is like 10 mil. I wonder if it would just, no. I gotta find something to carve this out nicely. We'll tr we'll just, we just wanna open it up slightly, don't we? By the way, this is, uh, I'm at the end of the third week post COVID, um, which is why I've still got a bit of a cold, that sort of thing. It was uh, a lot tougher than I thought it was gonna be. I honestly thought it would pass me by, but it didn't, but I'm nearly better. Okay, let's see if this step drill will solve my problem. Oh, I think it did. Well, it took some material away anyway. This is all we want. Just enough so that, yes, that'll be all right. That's all we need, isn't it? In fact, I'll drill that one out too far. So we'll have this one. That one will go in the inside box. We'll put that on the outside box. However, these need to be drilled out to 20 mil now, which is just under an inch. Uh, so we can fit these things in. Swarf going down here, do we? Uh, uh, I need some masking tape or something, or do I? Do we just do it and then vac it out? We'll do that. Behind me, there's a lot of swarf in behind there. Hang on. Oh, ouch. Can I do this without hurting anything? No. There's one. I just want to, if I can. Get some of the bits off. Now, because of my, I have this, these mental issues. I remember taking the grommet out of here. <laughs> I don't know where, oh, there it is. I didn't know where I put it. Okay, check the back. That'll do. We'll just check. It goes in nicely, yes. So that's a success. We've just got to do the other one now, the front panel. Just 
It might be a bit more difficult, I don't know. Oh, it needs a bit of deep bearing as well, look. I've just drilled out the wrong hole. I've just drilled out the switch. Oh well, we'll put a blank in there. <laughs> Have to move it along or something. I mean, that's, that's only a bit of metal. We could always make another bit. And I want to chuck this away anyway. Because I need this. I want some software, you know, where a little controller. Now, shut up. Let's drill this one out now. The other side. <laughs> All right, here we let's go back to the office and uh, fit all this nicely. Right, let me show you the problem I've got here now. It's quite interesting. It does, weirdly enough, still fit. And I've even got a, didn't quite drill out where the pip was. So that's lucky. We will need to pad it out a bit though, with a little bit of, a couple of washers or something like that. Well, it's looking nice. I'll just put them all in. I'm just gonna give them a little hand tight now, just to, now the, the copper has probably bent up a bit. I love electricity. It's so much fun. Now we've got our 12 volts as well that we've got to prepare to fire the thing, to fire the relays in the field, you know. We have achieved, I'm just gonna make sure all this settles in here. And then what we'll do is we'll have to go out to the workshop and find a big wash or something so we can fit this switch properly in the future. Okay, I found a wash, I just drilled it out and that'll fit there. And everything will be back to normal. I didn't need glue after all. I've connected the controller to the relays. All I need to do is wire up some 12 volts to it now. Which is behind here. Got both cameras, I've got one on the little controller just down here somewhere. And I don't know if we can see anything, but we will try and see what's going on. First of all, have a listen to this. Oh yes. Lovely. So let's get a close up. I'll just show you the relays firing. It's already complicated. <laughs> uh, that's relay five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Lovely. Okay.
Right now, we don't know which one of these is the one we're trying to connect. We'll short out, say, five and six or something on one of them and one and two on the other and work it out. One and two. Yes. Okay, so. We do have another camera on the way, which should cut down on some of this wind, all right? So anyway, we're ready to test. Okay, we're gonna leave this camera pointing at that and hopefully the vibrations as this click over, will, um, you know, we'll hear it, all right? So back to the office and let's press some buttons, basically, and test it. You're on my little phone at the moment, you see. Right, so here we are. Nothing's connected right now, but if we just do this and back, and then let's swap to the other camera and see what happens. There we are, so. This is my patch lead between the cabinet and the blue box. <sighs> Now I have to thank Tom today because he's playing cameraman. So Tom, we need a number between one and six, please. Four. Four. Right, so we're on 80 meters. I've just heard of a QSO there. Hopefully they'll still be there. Tom picked number four, so I'm one, two, three, Don't speak anybody. There is an instruction. So we'll dig this into the ground and I'll shorten it a bit actually. That will go underground all the way to there. The fan dive holes up here somewhere. Not today. We've proved it works, which is fine. I've tidied the cables up a bit. Just kept them off the, off the deck. That is the wire for Ethernet for the microwave. Next big project. In the meantime, we'll shut this down and uh, go and have a cup of tea. But if you would let me know if I'm supposed to protect this somehow, even though it's in the box, leave a comment. All right, so all the best, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you on the next one. <laughs> so if you've had COVID, you'll know that... Um, you genuinely do get like a brain fog. It's very, very strange. I mean, I wish I didn't have it, but I, I am, I'm making mistakes and I'm getting things wrong. Uh, it's annoying the hell out of me, to be honest. Uh, of course, I've recently started this medication as well, and I'm not quite sure, you know, that should actually make it better. I should be remembering things. I should be able to do things better. 
but it seems I seem to have gone backwards. So I'm convinced after talking to a couple of doctors and other people that have had COVID, this is probably all to do with the the brain fog post COVID. So if it doesn't kill you, it just buggers you up a bit. That's all.